So by the time this video is uploaded, it is Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. It is the primary election for the mayoral race in New York City. And currently, as of the recording of this video, um, according to the polls and to the betting markets, Eric Adams is the frontrunner. Uh, who is Eric Adams? Well, he is the current borough president of Brooklyn and a former captain of the NYPD. And given just the last year and all these protests for racial justice and against police brutality we've seen, why are voters in New York City gravitating towards someone like Adams, an ex-cop, as I mentioned? Well, to do this deep dive, we need to understand um, the history of elections in New York. And we're going to a Vanity Fair article for this. Quote, Timing is always crucial in city elections. David Dinkins won as a racial conciliator in 1989, shortly after, after Yusuf Hawkins, a black teenager, was killed by a group of white men in Bensonhurst. Four years later, crime was up, and Rudy Giuliani won as a hard-ass ex-prosecutor. X years later, eight years later, the World Trade Center was attacked, and the city thought it needed to elect a billionaire businessman, Mike Bloomberg, to recover. Twelve years after that, lefty Bill de Blasio was the supposed antidote to the autocrat. So, it's clear now that we've seen kind of a back and forth. It's what some refer to as the backlash effect, where voters are fed up with the state of affairs, so they vote for pretty much the opposite of whoever's in power right now, and that's exactly what we're seeing now with the rise of Eric Adams, with crime being eclipsing COVID as the top issue on New Yorkers' minds, and over two-thirds of likely Democratic voters in New York supporting increasing police presence, at least in terms of on subways. And it's not like Mayor de Blasio's approval ratings have ever been great when it comes to his relations with the NYPD, um, at, at least in terms of what I could find. They've barely broken 50% on a good day. So that explains now why we're seeing the rise of somebody like Eric Adams, someone who talks about reforming the police and talks about like how they need a, they're a necessary presence, but there needs to be reform practices. And he says, quote, hiring the right people to do the right jobs is necessary, according to the Vanity Fair article. And you know, it all sounds great. It sounds like great that he's preaching this kind of thing, for lack of a better term. But one of the one of the things I find interesting is how there is little to no record on his police, little to no information on his policing record that is available to the public. And not only that, but in trying to appeal to the uh, New Yorkers who see crime as their main issue, trying to look tough on crime, if you will, he is missing the mark quite a bit. He has spoken in favor of bringing back the anti-crime unit of the NYPD, despite the controversy surrounding it that ended up in its abolition last year, um, as police, as officers in the unit often abuse their power, and this was prevalent, especially in the murder of Eric Garner in July of 2014. Not only that, but after previously advocating against the tool, he in, endorsed stop and frisk, which was controversial under the Bloomberg mayorality, as ineffective in targeting minorities. He calls it, quote, a great tool if used properly, despite the fact that it is incredibly rare at stopping crime, and when it is, it's usually just because of already reasonable doubt, but even then, cases of civilians being approached in terms of reasonable doubt were already rare. Not only that, but again, it has been ruled in court that this po this policy unfairly targets minorities. Not only that, but he has rallied in support of solitary confine confinement, and now he says that this is only for violent offenses, but even so, research from Cornell University has found that it is a driving factor in terms of increasing the recidivism rate. So, in essence, by being tough on crime, by supporting policies like solitary confinement, he is creating more crime because these practices are known to do that. And while he positions himself as tough on crime to appeal to New Yorkers, the vast majority of whom are concerned about the issue of crime, he's neglecting to address the root causes of crime. Gang violence is particularly one of the reasons why violent crime in New York has spiked dramatically in the last year. 
and while Adams, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't address the issues of areas such as hypercapitalism and mental health issues, which researchers have concluded are driving forces behind gang violence. And so by not addressing the root of the problem, Eric Adams and other other tough on crime candidates are not really working, are not really serious about stopping crime. And why am I making this video now? Why am I making this video now before we have the votes in? And given the fact that New York City uses ranked choice voting now, it could be weeks, uh, probably even a month before we know who the winner of the primary is. It's because even if he doesn't win, his influence on the race still remains absolutely. You see someone like Andrew Yang, who before uh, he basically threw Palestinians under the bus last month, uh, was considered the front runner. You hear him saying quotes like this, and I'm, I'm going to give a content warning here. I don't often do this, but this is a content warning because for ableism, I have Asperger's. So this is something that definitely did give me quite a visceral reaction the first time I heard it. I'm going to read you a quote that he said during the most recent debate. Yes, mentally ill people have rights, but you know who else has rights? We do, the people and families of the city. We have the right to walk the street and not fear for our safety because a mentally ill person is going to lash out at us. Yeah, that could have been said better to say the least. So it's clear that when you have candidates like Andrew Yang already emulating these tough on crime talking points, uh, when we know the NYPD's history with mentally ill people and being completely unprepared to respond to them, it just shows how Adam's record, how Adam's calls for police presence and like keeping the police as is and being vague in his ideas of reforming them and not actually addressing the root causes. It goes to show that his influence on this race, even if he doesn't win, which at this point he probably will, but even if he doesn't win, they're gonna st it's going to still be there. And whoever is the next mayor will probably have some influence uh, from Eric Adams. And the rise of Eric Adams in the polls, again, attributable to New Yorkers concerned with crime and his record as a cop and them seeing as someone, okay, so he's lived the experience, so he knows... Uh, and actually, like as a young boy, he was a victim of police brutality, and that's what inspired him to join the police force, hoping that he could change it from within. And so I think a lot of voters in New York see that, and they're like, this is a person who understands how to best deal with issues of racial justice. However, where he misses the mark is his support for practices that are not only racist, but are not good at deterring crime and only lead to more in the future. And the influence that he has on that is definitely scary. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do the usual. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, click over here to check out my last two videos, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.